Encidelphus lived in the coastal waters around Peru during the early Miocene, about 19 million years ago. It was a little less closely related to its modern river-dwelling cousins than Fercacetus, and was slightly larger. But what made it weird was its incredibly long snout, lined with around 256 tiny sharp teeth, which also curved markedly to the right side along its 55 centimeters length. With only one known skull of Encidelphus it's impossible to tell if this was a natural condition for the species or if it was some sort of anomalous individual. It doesn't seem to be a deformation of the fossil, at least. These protodolphins had forward-pointing protruding teeth at the tips of their snouts, resembling those of some plesiosaurs, suggesting they were a convergent adaptation used for snagging hold of slippery soft-bodied aquatic prey. Fercacetus had a uniquely shaped snout for a cetacean, curving upwards for most of its length but then turning downwards right at the tip, which along with large forward-pointing teeth gave its jaws a vaguely crocodilian appearance. Cymocetus is known from a fossil skull and a few other fragments discovered in the 70s but not officially described until 2002. It had a mixture of primitive and specialized features, indicating it was closely related to the most basal of the toothed whales, but its skull structure suggests it already had well-developed echolocation ability. Its jaws were also partly toothless and oddly downturned, which has been interpreted as an adaptation for suction feeding, sucking in a mixture of sediment and soft-bodied invertebrates from the seafloor and straining the food out between its sieve-like teeth. Otobenistops is perhaps one of the strangest-looking fossil cetaceans ever discovered. Related to both the porpoises and the narwhal beluga family, it was around 4 meters long, and its long tusks and broad-snout face gave it an appearance strikingly similar to the modern walrus. Much like the walrus, it was probably a bottom feeder which sucked mollusks out of their shells with muscular lips and tongue. The function of the tusks is unclear. They may have been sexually dimorphic, with only males possessing the especially long right tusks. They were also likely rather brittle, and when swimming Otobenistops probably had to angle its head downwards to hold its tusks close against its body. Despite its close relation to the narwhal, the tusks weren't actually homologous, instead being another example of convergent evolution. Kentriodon was one of the earliest members of the Delphinoids, fossils of seven different species of Kentriodon have been found in Europe, Japan and North America. They were widespread and relatively common, and seem to have been close ecological counterparts to their living relatives. They probably ate small fish and other nectonic animals, had echolocation ability comparable to modern dolphins, and may have formed social pods. Cossetia seems to have had a larger number of functional teeth than modern monodontids, and probably didn't suction feed like its modern close relatives. Instead, it may have fed more like most porpoises and dolphins, relying more on speed and snapping jaws to capture prey. It inhabited the Mediterranean at a time not long after the sea there had mostly dried up and then been rapidly refilled. The local climate at the time was hotter than it is today, with tropical temperatures, and suggests that this whale's ancestors must have originally moved into the replenishing Mediterranean from lower latitudes alongside these other warmth-adapted animals. The beluga is adapted to life in the Arctic, with anatomical and physiological characteristics that differentiate it from other cetaceans. Amongst these are its all-white color and the absence of a dorsal fin, which allows it to swim under ice with ease. It possesses a distinctive protuberance at the front of its head which houses an echolocation organ called the melon, which in this species is large and deformable. Like many cetaceans, a large percentage of its weight is blubber. Its sense of hearing is highly developed and its echolocation allows it to move about and find breathing holes under sheet ice. They are gregarious and form groups of 10 animals on average, they are slow swimmers. 
Belugas are one of the most commonly kept cetaceans in captivity, they are considered charismatic because of their smiling appearance, communicative nature and supple, graceful movement. The most conspicuous characteristic of the male narwhal is a single long tusk, which is in fact a canine tooth that projects from the left side of the upper jaw, through the lip and forms a left-handed helical spiral. About 1 in 500 males has two tusks, occurring when the right canine also grows out through the lip. Only about 15% of females grow a tusk, which typically is smaller than a male tusk, with a less noticeable spiral. Scientists have long speculated on the biological function of the tusk. Proposed functions include use of the tusk as a weapon, for opening breathing holes in sea ice, in feeding, as an acoustic organ and as a secondary sex character. The leading theory has long been that the narwhal tusk serves as a secondary sex character of males, for non-violent assessment of hierarchical status on the basis of relative tusk size. However, detailed analysis reveals that the tusk is a highly innervated sensory organ with millions of nerve endings connecting seawater stimuli in the external ocean environment with the brain. Described in early 2014, Semirostrum was around 2 meters long and had a distinctively bizarre elongated lower jaw, almost twice the length of the upper jaw, giving it the appearance of having a massive chin. The lower jaw was full of nerves and blood vessels, indicating it was a highly specialized sensory structure probably used for prey detection. It may have dragged its jaw through the murky seafloor, somewhat like an underwater equivalent of a skimmer bird, hunting by touch for small prey. Porpoises are distinguished from dolphins by their flattened, spade-shaped teeth distinct from the conical teeth of dolphins, and lack of a pronounced beak. Harbor porpoises are generally shy and tend to avoid boats. They are usually solitary or found in small groups, and they are known for their distinctive rolling motion at the surface of the water. Like other cetaceans, they communicate using a variety of vocalizations. These include clicks and whistles, which are used for echolocation, navigation, and social communication. The social life of harbor porpoises is not well understood. They are generally seen as a solitary species. Most of the time, porpoises are either alone or in groups of no more than five animals. The smallest living species of cetacean, vaquita, is currently on the brink of extinction. Anthropogenic effects of a rise in commercial fishing such as accidental bycatch, illegal fishing and entanglement have been linked to the cause of their decline. As of the last knowledge in 2021, the vaquita population was critically endangered, with only around 10 individuals remaining in the wild. Efforts to protect and preserve this species continue, with a focus on reducing threats such as illegal fishing and improving enforcement measures. They are found exclusively in the northern part of the Gulf of California. They prefer shallow, coastal waters and are known to inhabit a very limited range. Dolls porpoises are known for their playful and inquisitive behavior, often riding the bow waves of boats. They are also skilled swimmers, capable of performing acrobatic leaps and somersaults. They have a striking black and white pattern, with a robust body that is more streamlined compared to other porpoises. They are one of the fastest marine mammals, capable of reaching speeds of up to 55 km per hour. Dolls porpoises are opportunistic, hunting a variety of surface and midwater species. Common prey are mesopelagic fish, such as myctophids and gonadid squid. Are highly active swimmers. Rapid swimming at the surface creates a characteristic spray called a rooster tail. The anatomy of finless porpoises has been relatively well studied, compared with that of some other cetacean species. For example, the tubercles along the dorsal ridge are known to contain numerous nerve endings that may possess a sensory function. The auditory system also appears well developed, 
with numerous large nerve fibers specialized for rapid communication between the ears and the brain. On the other hand, sight is relatively poor, with a reduced lens and a limited number of fibers in the optic nerve and to the muscles moving the eyes. The skeleton is unusually light, accounting for only 5% of the total weight of the animal. Cotylochora is known from South Carolina of the United States, about 28 million years ago. Roughly 3 meters long, it was a member of a somewhat obscure clade of early odontocetes called the Xenorophidae, one of the very first groups to diverge, and probably about as distantly related to modern forms as it's possible to be while still being a member of the toothed whales. Its skull indicates it possessed at least a rudimentary form of echolocation. Estimated to have measured about one meter long, inner marostrum had a very short downturned snout and was completely toothless, specialized adaptations for suction feeding on small soft-bodied creatures on the seafloor. Unusually for a toothed whale it also had proportionally large infraorbital foramina, openings in the bones of its snout for blood vessels and nerves to pass through. This suggests the presence of well-developed fleshy lips and possibly whiskers, or maybe even an electroreceptive sense similar to some modern dolphins. Living about 4 million years ago, Australodelphus is known from Princess Elizabeth Land of East Antarctica. It was a member of the oceanic dolphin family but displayed striking evolutionary convergence with beaked whales. Its jaws were completely toothless, and seem to have been adapted for the same method of feeding as the beaked whales it resembles, sucking in soft-bodied prey like squid by manipulating the water pressure inside its mouth. The most visible characteristic feature of rough-toothed dolphin is its conical head and slender nose, other dolphins either have a shorter snout or a more visibly bulging melon on the forehead. As the common name for the species implies, the teeth are also distinctive, having a roughened surface formed by numerous narrow irregular ridges. They have been reported to have between 19 and 28 teeth in each quarter of the jaw. The rough-toothed dolphin's jaw on the outside is very distinct. Risso's dolphins have a robust and bulky body, with a relatively large and rounded forehead. They are predominantly dark gray in color, often with scars and scratches acquired from social interactions and prey. These scars accumulate over the dolphin's lifetime, giving older individuals a distinctive appearance. They are known for their social and gregarious nature. They often travel in groups, known as pods, which can range in size from just a few individuals to as many as 30 members. They are also known for their acrobatic behavior, such as leaping and spy hopping. The false killer whale reaches a maximum length of 6 meters, though size can vary around the world. It is highly sociable, known to form pods of up to 50 members, and can also form pods with other dolphin species. It can form close bonds with other species, as well as have sexual interactions with them. But the false killer whale has also been known to eat other dolphins, though it typically eats squid and fish. Several aquariums around the world keep one or more false killer whales, though its aggression toward other dolphins makes it less desirable. It is threatened by fishing operations, as it can entangle in fishing gear. It is more susceptible to organochloride buildup than other dolphins, being higher up on the food chain, and stranded individuals around the world show higher levels than other dolphins. It has been known to ride the wakes of large boats, which could put it at risk of hitting the propeller. A new type of dolphin with a short, Spoon-shaped nose and high, bulbous forehead has been identified from a fossil found in the North Sea, the blunt-snout dolphin is a prehistoric pilot whale genus known from a single specimen. 
The bone shows an unusually large tip region containing six teeth known as the premaxilla. This feature suggests the broad, blunt nature of the creature's snout. This bulbous head could have the same purpose of the beluga's head. Pilot whales feed primarily on squid, but will also hunt large demersal fish such as cod and turbot. They are highly social and may remain with their birth pod throughout their lifetime. Short-finned pilot whales are one of the few mammal species in which females go through menopause, and post-reproductive females continue to contribute to their pod. Pilot whales are notorious for stranding themselves on beaches, but the reason behind this is not fully understood, although marine biologists have shed light on the discovery it is due to the mammal's inner ear being damaged from noise pollution in the ocean, such as from cargo ships or military exercises. The long-finned pilot whale has traditionally been hunted by driving, which involves many hunters and boats gathering in a semicircle behind a pod of whales close to shore, and slowly driving them towards a bay, where they become stranded and are then slaughtered. The whales were hunted for bone, meat, oil, and fertilizer. In the Faroe Islands, pilot whale hunting started at least in the 60th century, and continued into modern times, with thousands being killed during the 70s and the 80s. Internationally, animal rights groups, who consider the hunts cruel and unnecessary, have targeted them with protests, boycotts, and occasional direct interventions. The pygmy killer whale is dark gray to black on the cape and has a sharp change to lighter gray on the sides. The flesh around their lips and on the end of their snout is white while pinkish white skin surrounds the genitals. They travel approximately 3 km per hour and are predominantly found in deeper waters ranging from 500 to 2000 meters in depth. The linear directionality of sound production in pygmy killer whales is better than in porpoises but lower than is found in bottlenose dolphins, higher directionality results in sounds that are easier to discern from background noise. Based on similarities to the acoustic parameters of other odontocetes, it is presumed that they use a similar mechanism for producing echolocation clicks. Despite commonly being called killer whales, modern orcas are actually the largest living members of the oceanic dolphin family. Their ancestors are thought to have diverged from other dolphins between 10 and 5 million years ago. Orsinus cytoniensis was an early member of the orca lineage, and was probably a transitional form between their early dolphin ancestors and the modern Orsinus orca. It was half the size of modern orcas. While it had a higher tooth count than its living relatives its teeth were also proportionally smaller, suggesting it wasn't specialized for tackling large prey and probably fed mainly on fish and squid. Killer whale is the only extant species in the genus Orsinus and is recognizable by its black and white patterned body. A cosmopolitan species, orcas can be found in all of the world's oceans in a variety of marine environments, from Arctic and Antarctic regions to tropical seas. They are apex predators and have a diverse diet. Individual populations often specialize in particular types of prey. They are highly social, some populations are composed of highly stable matrilineal family groups. Their sophisticated hunting techniques and vocal behaviors, which are often specific to a particular group and passed across generations, have been described as manifestations of animal culture. Orcas are not usually a threat to humans, and no fatal attack has ever been documented in their natural habitat. There have been cases of captive orcas killing or injuring their handlers at marine theme parks. Organizations campaign against the practice of keeping them in captivity. In captivity, they often develop pathologies, such as the dorsal fin collapse seen in 60 to 90 percent of captive males. Captives have vastly reduced life expectancies, on average only living into their 20s while in the wild they can live over 75 years. Captivity usually bears little resemblance to wild habitat, and captive whale social groups are foreign to those found in the wild. Critics claim captive life is stressful due to these factors and the requirement to perform circus tricks that are not part of wild orca behavior. 
wild orcas may travel up to 160 kilometers in a day, and critics say the animals are too big and intelligent to be suitable for captivity. Captives occasionally act aggressively towards themselves, their tankmates, or humans, which critics say is a result of stress. Hector's dolphin is the smallest dolphin species. Mature adults have a total length of 1, 5 meters and weigh 50 kilograms, also they can reach at least 22 years of age. These dolphins are known for their striking black, white, and gray coloration. They have a distinctive rounded dorsal fin and a short, stocky body. They are also recognized for their unique facial markings, which include a black patch around their eyes and a distinct black stripe running from the dorsal fin to the tail. They are known for their playful and energetic behavior, they often engage in acrobatic displays. Commerson's dolphin is very active. It is often seen swimming rapidly on the surface and leaping from the water. It also spins and twists as it swims and may surf on breaking waves when very close to the shore. It will bow ride and swim behind fast moving boats. It is also known to swim upside down, which is thought to improve the visibility of its prey. The proximity of the dolphin to the shore makes accidental killing in gillnets a common occurrence. Northern right whale dolphin has a streamlined body with a sloping forehead, being more slender than other delphinids, and lacks any fin or ridge on the smoothly curving back. The body is mostly black with a white ventral marking extending forward as a narrow band from the caudal peduncle to the throat region, where this patch widens. They are fast swimmers. Their average swimming speed is around 26 km per hour but they can reach speeds of up to 40 km per hour. When traveling fast, a group looks as though they are bouncing along on the water, as they make low, graceful leaps together, sometimes traveling as far as 7 meters in one leap. White-beaked dolphins are known to be highly social and often travel in groups of about 10 to 30 individuals, although larger groups have been observed. They are known to be friendly and curious around boats, making them a popular site for whale watchers and tourists in the North Atlantic. They are known to undertake seasonal migrations, moving to different areas in search of food and suitable breeding grounds. Their fast swimming abilities and group strategies are often employed to evade predators. Like most dolphins, Pacific white-sided dolphins are highly social and often travel in large groups known as herds or pods, which can consist of hundreds of individuals. They are known to be opportunistic feeders, often taking advantage of schools of fish and other abundant prey sources in their habitat. They use a range of vocalizations, including clicks, whistles and pulsed calls, for communication and echolocation. These sounds help them navigate, locate prey and maintain social bonds within their pods. Fraser's dolphins are known for their unique coloration, with a dark blue to gray band running from their eye to their flipper, contrasting with their pale colored undersides. They have a slender and streamlined body, allowing them to swiftly move through the water. They swim quickly in large, tightly packed groups, numbering anywhere from 100 to 1000 in number. Often porpoising, the groups chop up the water tremendously. The Tukuksi exists in small groups of about 10 to 15 individuals, and swim in tight-knit groups, suggesting a highly developed social structure. Tukuksis are quite active and may jump clear of the water, somersault, spy hop or tail splash. They are unlikely, however, to approach boats. They have been observed to feed with other river dolphins. They feed on a wide variety of fish. The ventral region is much lighter, often pinkish. It is theorized that this pinkish color may be caused or intensified by increased blood flow. The Tukuksi has one of the largest known encephalization quotients among mammals. 
The Tukuksi's habitat has been greatly affected by anthropogenic activities including the expansion of hydroelectric projects, which usually results in isolation where a dam is built. Pollution from human activity has also degraded the quality of the habitat and increases the chance for Tukuksis to consume heavy metals. Adult Indo-Pacific humpback dolphins come to the water surface to breathe for 20 to 30 seconds before diving deep again, for 2 to 8 minutes. Dolphin calves, with smaller lung capacities, surface twice as often as adults, staying underwater for 1 to 3 minutes. Adult dolphins rarely stay underwater for more than 4 minutes. They are threatened by habitat loss, water pollution, coastal development, overfishing and an increase in marine traffic within its range. Indo-Pacific humpback dolphins are at particular risk of exposure to organic pollutants because they inhabit shallow coastal waters, which are often impacted by human activities. Anthropogenic pollutants pose a risk to marine mammals that reside in coastal waters. Discharge of organic pollutants into marine environments has been shown to decrease water quality, resulting in habitat loss and a significant reduction in species richness. The climbing dolphin looks very similar to the spinner dolphin. At close quarters, it is possible to observe that the beak of the climbing is slightly shorter than that of its relative. The dorsal fin is also less erect and triangular. They do spin longitudinally when jumping clear of the water, but not with as much regularity and complexity as the spinner dolphin. The total population is unknown. The only population estimate available is for the north part of the Gulf of Mexico, where a count of 6,500 individuals was reported. The coloring of the Atlantic spotted dolphin varies enormously as it grows, and is usually classified into age-dependent phases known as two-tone, speckled, mottled and fused. They are extremely gregarious animals, which gather in complex social groups of 5 to 15, often in mixed groups with common bottlenose dolphins. They are fast swimmers and known for their bow riding and long, shallow leaping behaviors. These animals are cooperative hunters that hunt in groups at night. They strategically encircle their prey, which consists mostly of small fish, benthic invertebrates, and cephalopods such as squid. They can dive to depths of up to 60 meters and can stay beneath the surface for up to 10 minutes at a time. When showing aggression towards other species, these dolphins make use of more contact behaviors such as biting and chasing than when being aggressive towards members of their species, in which they usually rely on display behaviors. The striped dolphin has a similar size and shape to several other dolphins that inhabit the waters it does. However, its coloring is very different and makes it relatively easy to notice at sea. It is as capable as any dolphin at performing acrobatics, frequently breaching and jumping far above the surface of the water. Sometimes, it approaches boats in the Atlantic and Mediterranean, but this is dramatically less common in other areas, particularly in the Pacific, where it has been heavily exploited in the past. Striped dolphins are known as streakers throughout the eastern tropical Pacific due to their behavior of rapidly swimming away from vessels to avoid collisions. Common dolphins live in both warm temperate and tropical waters ranging. They have a varied diet consisting of many species of fish and squid. This includes both mesopelagic species and epipelagic schooling species. They have been recorded to make dives up to 200 meters deep. There is some evidence that common dolphins use signature whistles, similar to that of the bottlenose dolphin. These whistles are believed to serve as an acoustic label, and provide identification information similar to that of a name. It takes approximately one year for a calf to learn its signature whistle after which it remains stable for the rest of a dolphin's life. In South Africa, as many as 29 common dolphin signature whistle types were detected. However, it was difficult to determine if each dolphin had its own signature whistle due to the vast number of dolphins present and anthropogenic background noise. Additionally, considering the vast number of dolphins present and taking into account their feeding and diving behavior, 
it appears that common dolphin signature whistles are also used for group cohesion. Another hypothesis for the function of signature whistles is that they serve as a beacon for lost individuals. The common bottlenose dolphin has a larger brain than humans. Many investigations of its intelligence include tests of mimicry, use of artificial language, object categorization and self-recognition. This intelligence has driven considerable interaction with humans. It is popular in aquarium shows and television programs such as Flipper. It has also been trained for military uses such as locating sea mines or detecting and marking enemy divers. In some areas, they cooperate with local fishermen by driving fish toward the fishermen and eating the fish that escape the fishermen's nets. Their heads contain an oily substance that both acts as an acoustic lens and protects the brain case. They emit clicking sounds and listen for the return echoes to determine the location and shape of nearby items, including potential prey. There have been reports of dolphins apparently getting high from the neurotoxins produced by pufferfish. The toxins produced can have psychoactive effects, and it has been suggested that dolphins may deliberately interact with these fish to experience altered states of consciousness. They are allo known to sleep with only one hemisphere of their brain at a time, allowing them to maintain enough consciousness to surface and breathe. The Amazon River Dolphin is the largest species of river dolphin, with adult males reaching 185 kilograms in weight, and 2.5 meters in length. Adults acquire a pink color, more prominent in males. Like other toothed whales, they have a melon, an organ that is used for bio-sonar. Are often very murky, and it is therefore likely to depend much more on its sense of echolocation than vision when navigating and finding prey. However, echolocation in shallow waters and flooded forests may result in many echoes to keep track of. For each click produced a multitude of echoes are likely to return to the echolocating animal almost on top of each other which makes object discrimination difficult. This may be why the Amazon River dolphin produces less powerful clicks compared to other similar sized toothed whales. The fin size, unfused vertebrae, and its relative size allow for improved maneuverability when navigating flooded forests and capturing prey. They have one of the widest ranging diets among toothed whales, and feed on up to 53 different species of fish. While hunting is a major threat, in recent decades greater impacts on population have been due to the loss of habitat and inadvertent entanglement in fishing lines. Baiji is thought to be the first dolphin species driven to extinction due to the impact of humans. This dolphin is listed as critically endangered, possibly extinct by the International Union for Conservation of Nature, has not been seen in 40 years, and several surveys of the Yangtze have failed to find it. Its population declined drastically in decades as China industrialized and made heavy use of the river for fishing, transportation and hydroelectricity. It has been credibly claimed, after surveys in the Yangtze River during the 80s, that Baiji could be the first dolphin species in history that humans have driven to extinction.